Um, I know that we have a few minutes, but I just wanted to share with you some of the uh, things I've been doing, also teaching students in Texas. Um, I teach two or three, uh, about three uh, creative thinking classes. And uh, so I'm just going to go quickly through this. This lends itself a little bit better to a workshop. So I just want to let people know that if, since we are here at this university, if you uh, are interested, please let me know. First of all, I want you to have a look at this and tell me whether the uh, primary school kid is wrong or right. Okay. So here, what you see is cognitive fixations mainly in the teacher side. Oh. Basically, because there's assumption there that uh, that the, the kid is going to to to, to know that, that that those questions have been number one, two, three. Okay, never mind. This is another uh, exercise. I try. I advise you to try it out. Um, and uh, most people, I'm going to give you a, it's a bit of a spoiler, but then you can try it with your friends. Uh, most people, when they look at this, they think that uh, it's a mathematical problem. So this is uh, a, a challenge that is priming to think that it's mathematics. It's getting you to do some computation. Uh, so some people will get some things wrong. Uh, like for instance, they uh, forget, they, they miss the multiplication si uh, symbol. Um, and I think that's because of the, uh, icons and the, 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 object, the objects there. But uh, what happens here is that uh, people usually get it wrong most of the time, because this is not only mathematical, it's also about observation. Now, what do you see there? Uh, if anyone wants to put something in the chat, I'll just give you about five seconds to write something. But if you don't want to put, if you are very shy, want to write anything, that's okay. I'm going to ask you the same question now. What do you see there? So for most people, they see here a face that they couldn't see here. Uh, now, I don't know whether the screen, if you, if you project this on, a, on the big screen and in the class, it's easier to mislead people. <laughs> so this is a little bit of that. Again, hundreds of ways that, that people get fixated in terms of perception. Right? What I see or what I can see, just turn it around. Look at it from a different perspective. What about this one? All right, so um, basically, what is cognitive uh, fixation? It's this process that we all experience in many ways. Huh? And it has to be with a mental block or inability to produce different uh, uh, alternatives, different alternatives, not similar alternatives. And when we get stuck only one solution, huh? we think, well, this is the only way to do this. Uh, there could be, there are very many reasons that this thing happens. But uh, I'm going to suggest that one of the reasons we find a lot of students, uh, students uh, uh, find it difficult to, to come up with different perspectives, and this may not be the case in the School of Arts or Liberal Arts, is because uh, they've been told that there's one right answer for, for problems. So what is the answer? A lot of students come to me and when I ask, ask them to come up with three different answers and they say, but what is the right answer? And I tell them, hey, you have different ways to answer this question. Okay, what is the most appropriate answer to you, for you? That would be a more productive way to look at this from a creative lens. So what are some of the factors that contribute to uh, cognitive fixation? Just trying to get the part out, so it's like, okay. Automaticity. So here, I'm going to give you the link to the paper that, has been pub that I published out of the dissertation. Uh, so then you can get all the references for those who are super interested in this area. Expertise can, uh, previous experience and cognitive bias. Now there's a lot of uh, research in in for in medicine that doctors how doctors they get stuck in the same uh, diagnosis and that's sometimes because of they see the same stuff again and again and again. So they don't ask themselves questions like could this be something different. So a lot of research has been done in that area, also with accountants and in, in other areas. Uh, um, so. This could be individual, or it could be also in groups. Okay, so groups you have group think, evaluation, apprehension, risk of avoidance, and prejudice thinking. Um, books written about this is just uh, immense. I'm I'm sorry for the quality of the print. <laughs> 
but this is one of the cognitive biases that we see very often in in research okay so what do we do in research just look for whatever confirms what we want to prove and the rest we just don't pay so much attention now i wanted to give you some of the group think is an amazing uh, uh, phenomenon that happens in groups when and and i want to give you some of the factors uh, that you can see they're listed uh, someone called Janice wrote a book on this about 30, 40 years ago, and it's still one of the uh, best references in this area. And it happens a lot in, in politics, but in any type of uh, decision making process, uh, where, where we know that we are all experts and we know that we are right, then you have a lot of stuff, all of that as well happening. So I know we are running out of time because we have another 10 minutes. So I'm just going to give you some of the examples how this could happen in the classroom and how students that get stuck. Number one, if you we always think about examples and giving examples for uh, creative uh, challenges, again that desire to come up with the right the right answer gets uh, people get students fixated on coming up with something that will conform to that example. So this uh, about I don't know thirty or forty uh, research papers on this only this type of uh, of um, exercise which you get uh, engineers or you get different groups of students and people are, are challenged to design a cap and you give them an example and they have to invent something that is a spill proof and anyway so what happens is that very often well, because this is a coffee cup very often with one of the wrong things with this mouth piece I don't know if you have tried to uh, drink uh, hot coffee with a straw. Uh, try it out tonight and see how what, how you feel. And it just is a painful exercise. All right. So the problem with this uh, exercise here is that uh, people get fixated. All right. Let's move on. A uh, typical by tracker, typical example uh, of a challenge given to students uh, to participants is uh, we have to uh, fix this candle on the wall. And uh, most of the time, students, uh, they fail to use the box as one of the items because they see the box is being used as a container. So they assume the box is not one of the items we need to use. Okay, that's like, it's called functional fixedness. All right, move on. So I'm just going to give you some references. Uh, uh, one of them, if you want uh, students to look into innovation, coming up with new products, just instead of looking at the product itself, you want to look into uh, the benefit you want or the function you want that product to give. You. And uh, so Anthony Ulwick does a good job in analyzing all this. What is the job to be done? What benefit do you want to get from this? And that will be, uh, guide the way you present the, the, the challenge. Now, provocation is uh, a tool used by Edward de Bono and uh, basically what it does is just gets you to come up with some sort of uh, stepping stone which could be through in terms of it could be an exaggeration reversal and looking at that you that will act as a trigger to come up with something different uh, there's a ted talk uh, on this um if you're interested but the interest that he used that the speaker used that tech talk as an example and he said what well, well let's look at the settings okay this is we have 500 people we want to have a TED talk for a lot of people. The stadium. Let's go. Let's do a TED talk in the stadium, and then he used that as a provocation. So then he said, "Well, how can we use the stadium?" And he said, "Well, one of the possibilities is to give TED talks when people are playing games. If you have a football game by Texas A&M, how can you get some of the players to give short TED talks during the breaks?" Okay, that's that's one of the ways that can work. So this is. Um, link to the paper that I was telling you about, which uh, is about uh, um, leadership in the church. Uh, the basic question that guided my, my research was uh, why such a creative God has an, uh, such an uncreative church. And, uh, and one of the things that I, um, that I looked into is, is the decision making by, uh, process by pastors. All right. So one of the ways, uh, one of the examples that I can tell you is, for instance, a church that uh, um, I mean, uh, was diminished in 50%, about 70% of the people they stopped coming to church because they moved from Saturday to Sun, from Sunday to Saturday. Okay, that's one of those things that got people 
stack. Uh, one of the, the tools that you can use for uh, to develop uh, flexibility is a scamper. No, that is a tool uh, that someone called Seed Punks uh, invented. And but the P is put to other users. So put to other users is one of the basic techniques that you can use to help students. Okay, what else can I do? With this? And in fact, in our previous presentation, I was uh, very interested because I think that the presenter was doing that. So can I do an embroidery with my plotter? What else can I do with the plotter? Okay, so as you can see, the uh, creativity is also about putting uh, the same resources to other users. So these are basic questions that can help you to look at reality differently. And uh, that's different tools that I, I use to help people uh, shift the way that they look at a problem. Okay, but usually what we are looking into is what are the basic assumptions we are making. And I want to finish with this. Uh, Paul Torrance, one of the uh, main researchers in creative thinking from the uh, University of Georgia, and he has done a lot of research in this area. And he came up with uh, basically uh, four different skills that people engage in creative thinking. One of them being fluency, the amount of ideas you can generate, originality, the newness of the ideas, flexibility, how different these ideas are to each other in different categories, and elaboration, which is the amount of details you put into the idea. So, so the tools that we can that we use and we teach students uh, help them to, to exercise all these abilities, all these skills. Now, this is, there are two ways to do this, basically. If you want to help students, uh, uh, you want to help students increase the, the flexibility in thinking. Number one, you want them to ask many different questions and select the best ones and why. And number two, you want them to come up with many different ideas. So brainstorming has to be in, in a certain way. Uh, you need to categorize the ideas and then think, well, what categories are we missing? That is one of the basic ways you can do this. All right, so this is a summarize here where I have just told you. And these slides are available for you if you want if you want them. And this is my email if you want to have any other questions. And I think I'm within my time. Um, and how are you will tell me if I went over? Thank you so much. Oh, so you much. have a few more minutes if you. How many? A few more minutes. Oh wow! Yeah. Because I forgot to put my timer. Then I just all right. So. Um, I hey, people have come up with some answers. Face and as well. So um, basically, what I noticed uh, teaching of this uh, for 10 years, I've been teaching creative thinking takes them and about seven, seven years of face to face classes. And mm -hmm. I get students from everywhere. Uh, so it's not only for education. I get from business, communication, psychology, and some of them are also from architecture. Um, so what I've noticed is that uh, if you really want to help students develop the creative thinking, it's going to be a process that's going to take you one or two semesters. It's not a workshop. It's not only one tool. Just go and do that, and then you will become highly creative. Uh, one of the things I've noticed in the students, especially undergraduate students, is that they, they sometimes they have very uh, they have very strong beliefs of, about their own lack of creativity, <laughs> and you have to undermine that belief. Just using research, you don't have to use uh, any doctrine or whatever, um, or being dogmatic about it. But research shows that if you get trained in this thing, you will become you can become more creative. So mm -hmm. what I suggest to every professor is be uh, patient, and then get people to do basically two things. Number one, do what we call in and out thinking in any meeting. In and out thinking is a place where you don't tell people share your idea aloud. They have to write down their ideas. If you have five people, they will write down five ideas each. And once they, they have written those, you can ask them, select the one you consider most original, and then share with each other. And then what else can you think of? So then you will have much more originality there than just people that start jumping to talking. Oh, this is my idea. What happens when I tell you my idea? If it's highly creative, it, it will prime other people to think in the same category. It's influencing people. And that's the problem with, with the type of brainstorming, which is uh, you have to write it out first. The second thing that I suggest is this document all ideas, write them down, mainly because whatever right now seems- I'm in Zoom. 
whatever ha seems hopeless right now, until tomorrow, you will see some sense. I think I've run out of time. Sorry. No, I think it's okay. Oh, <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought someone wanted to me to okay. just to wrap up. Anyway, so the, I wanted to give you these two extra because I had some extra time after going through 25 slides like crazy. But in any case, in any case, my offer still stands. Anyone wants to do a short workshop on this? I do workshops also using a games uh, mm -hmm. like blockers to uh, help people exercise their strategic thinking. And uh, I've been doing this about four or five with international students as well and with graduate students. Uh, I'd like to have a mixture so people can uh, share from the different areas of expertise. Well, thank you so much.